Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My name is Shahzad Hussain and I live at 20 Primary Way in Undercliff. And today is 115 days since my brother's been kidnapped from my care by the local authority Bradford Council in collaboration with his associates and partners, particularly the West Yorkshire Police, who've come and arrested me for, for what? For neglecting my brother, when the reality is that this is far, this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is just a pretext that they used. The reality was there's something very sinister going on, uh, and the reason for their t taking my brother was far more complex than simply coming down on the day and looking to arrest me and then take my brother away. Because if they've taken my brother away under legitimate reasons, why have they today, even today, you know, 115 days later, refused to engage with me, refused to tell me where he is? Uh, they basically just come and kidnapped him, uh, searched the whole house, take away, taken away his passports. How do you know you're, uh, that you're coming to take his passports away? They came with a specific aim to abduct him because their court case was failing and they needed to sabotage the court case or sabotage my my defence case so that they could win the case. And this is all about them. This is how they operate. It's all about winning uh, as far as they're concerned. They just want to win. Uh, and the cheat, lie, manipulate, buy off the judges, buy off the referees in order to win. And that's the situation we're facing now. It's 115 days later, and absolutely no progress is being made. The, I ring up, the, uh, I leave a voice message to the city solicitor every day, to the uh, uh, to the uh, social worker every day. I, uh, I contact the housing association solicitor every day, and also I leave a message with the police to contact me. Nobody wants to contact me. Nobody wants to engage with me because they realise that they're really messed up here. There's no legal framework. They just come down and kidnapped him. There is absolutely no legal framework in place. They just came down like goods, kidnapped a, a civilian, and are holding him hostage now for the last 115 days. They are worse than the Hamas the terrorists that have done all these atrocities that they're saying. They're the worse than the Israelis uh, doing the atrocities because both of them at least have some sort of accord where they have peace agreements or something. Uh, the, you know, the, there's a framework to get your people back. In my particular circumstances, Bradford Council is worse than these guys because they are worse than the terrorists because they're not providing me with any legal framework or to even see my brother. They basically just captured him and are holding him hostage. And this is a repeat process of what they did previously to my mother. They kidnapped her, held her hostage for the last 334 days of her life and then killed her off. And just brutality and... Uh, there's nothing I could do about it, and there's nowhere I could go. Uh, uh, so all I could do is just sit here like a madman, make videos and uh, just for posterity. Uh, that this is the situation that I'm facing today on the 1st of December 2023. That everybody's colluding and conspiring. Uh, and uh, uh, as I explained, there have been several attempts to uh, uh, lynch me in the courts, which has failed. Uh, but now I believe so. There's been some progress made today because I sent an email yesterday to the judges explaining to them that uh, you know you are you are you are doing these criminality things i emailed them directly saying that this is a, a year later from the final hearing and that you're still continuing to persecute and hound us to a point where a brother's gonna now be butchered to death uh, anyway uh, as a result of that email i've got an email back today from the housing association solicitor saying oh we would have come and do a gas safety inspection this is all fraud. Last time they attempted to do a gas gun, gun safety inspection, they were trying to set me up uh, to try to get uh, custody of uh, my brother then. That was on, uh, that was on uh, the 12th of October. And then by the 14th of October, they've raised us a false flag safeguarding alert in order to justify my brother Talib's abduction. That's why they ne needed him abducted, because it just strengthens their case. The case has loses all validity and merit if my brother's with me, so they've basically ripped me apart, ripped me and my brother apart, so they can win on this case. And they're quite candid about it. Yes, look, the circumstances have now changed. We've taken his brother away. He's never going to come back here again. Uh, it's just ridiculous. So anyway, I think the game is on foot now. The... They've started to plan up, plot and plan something, and one of that plotting and planning is attempting to do a gas safety inspection, a false flag gas safety inspection, because the last time they did it, it was uh, in 2022, and uh, as a, it was quite clear what they were trying to do there was try to uh, uh, arrange a false flag event. Then they've been sending several reminders in October, uh, and nothing's happened. I've told them, you know, basically not responded to them. And now all of a sudden, uh, you know, uh, six weeks later, they're now sending me another final reminder, saying that we're going to take court proceeding actions against you. And all they want
want to do is put injunctions against me so they can get me for contempt of court. And I, when they get me for contempt of court, that way they can then send me to prison. That's the only route that they've got left. Artificially creating a situation that makes me contemptuous to the court so that the courts can have their wicked way with me by sending me to prison. And that's, that's the only option available to them because right now I'm not even leaving the house. I'm, and there's no way for me to commit a crime if I don't even leave the house, is there? I'm not going out into the public. There's no way that they can attack me there. I'm not even driving anywhere. I just don't go out of the house anymore because that's the situation that they've created for me now because they, they want me alone and isolated and in prison like this. This is just a... They've just created a, a, a unique prison for me uh, and holding me hostage like this and uh, holding my brother hostage and uh, looking to persecute or victimise us. And they continue to do this, uh, you know, 140, 15 days later. They've got no case. They've, obviously, this is a co- murder cover-up of my mother's murder. They're trying to cover that up by d- p- persistently persisting with more co- further court actions. They're not speaking to me. They're not engaging with me. They're not looking to, looking to resolve anything. All they're looking to do is utilise and weaponize the court system in order to send me to prison because that's the only way that they can get a victory by through their perversion and corruption corruption corrupting the judges and the judiciary and the court system that's the only way that they can get any kind of uh, advantage over me because i'm not i'm not breaking any laws i'm going out of my way not to break any laws i don't need to break any laws my main priority has been the caring role which is to you know be such a taxation such a taxation on my life but these people that, that they're creating a facade and a persona uh, that they are, they're doing everything legal and lawful, and the reality is they're not. They're just all lying. They're, they're making money out of lies and deception and corruption. And that's how they uh, achieve what they're supposed to achieve, or what they're, what they're supposed to be doing. It, there's a difference between the, the rhetoric or, or, or the outward veneer and the reality which I'm having to face. And there's, it's all fraudulent and corrupt. Now, it's... Uh, 150 days later, and who am I? I'm t- emailing everybody. Or oh, the Yuli say, if you're being, uh, you know, uh, bullied, or if you're being uh, threatened, uh, or victimized, you need to tell somebody. Hey, man, I'm telling everybody, and nobody's listening. Who am I telling? I'm telling the police, uh, the chief constable of the police. I'm telling Richie Sudak, the prime minister of this country. I'm telling everybody that look, this is the, what they're doing to us, and nobody's willing to do anything because it's all work. They all work together. This aspect of independence. There is no independence there. There is no independence. They all work together. Independence there is a, an illusion for the delusional. So that's what it is. Independence, uh, societal, indep- organizational independence or independence from different corporate structures is a lie and a deception. The reality is that there is no independence. They all work as a collective, call together uh, and try to fool you that they are independent. Council, Bradford Council is not independent from the West Yorkshire Police. The West Yorkshire Police is not independent from the health, NHS health authorities. They all work together uh, and all the authorities work together. They all work together as well, like Oldham Council, Manchester Council, West Yorkshire Police, Greater Manchester Police. They all work as a collective. It's only the, uh, they give you the illusion of the Data Protection Act. Oh, no, we're all protecting your data and you, it won't be shared out with anybody. All lies, all deception. The reality is that they all work as collective, the wall all work as one. It's the state versus the citizens, the state officers versus the civilians. That's all it is. That's the, that's the only dividing line there is. There's, uh, they work collectively uh, against the people that are there. Ex- and they farm and uh, uh, they farm and exploit the people's labor in order to justify their own existence. And then they give you this lies and put out whatever veneer of respectability that all oh, no, we're doing everything that we're supposed to be doing. And most of the civilians, most of the sheep are too scared or too frightened to ever stand up or you know rebel against a situation that's causing them such misery. They are like toads in a in a gently boiling uh, furnace uh, in water, uh, and uh, they, they they just cope with it. They just take it. Uh, and, the, uh, and, the, and the officers of the state take such liberties against the somebody. Look, they've come and taken my brother, there's nothing I could do. You t- I can't go to anybody, I can't go to the solicitors, they'll buy off the solicitors. I can't go to the mainstream media, that's already been bought off, they've already got that cornered off. I can't go through the court system, they've bought off the court system, I've bought off all the judges. It's all uh, geared for their advantage in order to incarcerate me and exploit my labor and they're not just doing it to me they're doing it to everybody else it's just that i'm sick of it now and i'm gonna i'm speaking out about everybody else sit silently enduring the tyranny that's been that they're all living under i'm just gonna leave it there so today is uh, the first of december 2023 uh, and the time is around about quarter past or ten past nine and uh, i'm still alive and uh, 
If anything harm, I'm not suicidal, and if any harm comes to me, it's as a direct result of the local authority plotting and planning and trying to silence me because they know I'm whistleblowing on their failures, and they're trying to threaten me and holding my brother hostage like this in order to gag me. And this is all a means of a means to gag me from speaking out. And I've had enough, and I'm going to speak out. So I think we should leave it there. Allah Hafiz.